This is this is this is. Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast, everybody. What is happening this week? Big week. MXPX is going to be in Chicago and Milwaukee. So Friday night, Chicago. That's November 18th at the Chicago House of Blues. And then Saturday night, November 19th at the Rave in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So MXPX weekend coming up. Our good friends Teenage Bottle Rocket going to be there rocking out. Can't wait for it. It's happening whether we like it or not. And it just so happens we like it. So uh, I'll see you guys all there. MXPX.com for tickets. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a rager. And bundle up. It's probably starting to get cold out in Chicago and Milwaukee these this time of year, you know. So MXPX.com for that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all your orders. Uh, we have been sending out vinyl orders all week long. We are we're getting close to being done, but Please be patient. This is not Amazon. It's not, I mean, honestly, we're doing better than most record labels, to be honest. Uh, we're send, in most um, fulfillment companies, you know, we're, we're working all day, every day, getting this done. So thank you guys. Amazing. Um, I'm sure we'll hear about it on a few callers. We're going to do a voicemail episode here next week. Have a great guest, possibly two guests. Stay tuned for that. So I just had a birthday. It was great. Thank you all for the love. Thank you, thank you for the love. It was it was a, a great day. I spent all day working for you guys on the vinyl stuff. So uh, it's been amazing and and had had a great time doing it. I did take I took about an hour and a half to go to breakfast with the family. Uh, besides that, I was back out delivering orders, making it happen. So mxpeaks.com. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. There is still vinyl left. If you didn't pick up something and you want to. The whole idea was we didn't really want things to sell out. We wanted to have plenty for everybody. And a few variants have sold out, but there's plenty left. You can go get whatever record you want. All right. Um, as long as it's not one of the variants that's sold out. Right. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right, you guys. Uh, if you want to call in, please call in. Leave me a voicemail. Maybe you have a question about anything we're doing right now, anything we're going to be doing in the future. Maybe you want me to talk about uh, a tour in the past or whatever it is, you know, a topic, uh, a conversation. I'd love to have it with you guys. So um, thanks for your feedback. I have been reading your comments on not all of all of the comments, but if it's on the Mike Herrera podcast stuff, I see those comments um, on the socials. All right, you guys, let's get into it. First, first voicemail. Here we go. Hey Mike, what's up? It's William from Los Angeles again. I got your your little shout out a couple episodes back, and that was pretty cool, man. Make my day for sure. I know I got to keep these pretty short, so I'm gonna jump straight to my question. It's an easy one, and I know you know the answer to whose birthday is in a couple days. Today is November second, so you'll be celebrating a birthday pretty soon, man. And I'm just calling to wish you a happy birthday and wish you all the best. And I know you make every single day worth as much as you can so i know it'll be a good year ahead for you and i can only wish you well and thanks for being you and thanks for being how you are and we hope to have you for many many more years to come man if you're listening to this before i wish you well and if you're listening to it after i hope you had a great birthday man i can't wait to get back together with you it's been too long and sending a big hug your way love you Oh, man. Thank you so much, William. I appreciate you. Love you, brother. Thanks for calling in again. Um, I hope this makes your day again, you know, because that's that's why I do this. You know, we want to we want to connect together and we go way back. William and I, uh, he's been coming to shows for years and years and years. I'm talking like we were just kids together, you know, so a lot's gone on since then and uh we're both still here so it warms my heart to hear your voice brother uh thank you like i said right at the top of the show thank you for everybody that wished me happy birthday it was a great birthday um i got to work i i, I knew what i was doing i had had uh, a lot of work to do and it was great you know i'm feeling really really proud and thankful and grateful and feeling good doing all this work um just so you guys want if you are wondering what my job is with you know sending out vinyl to you guys when we have these big sales you know our box sets the vinyl 
you know, I, I'm kind of like the utility knife. You know, I do everything, anything that needs to be done. Um, but right now what I've been doing is mostly delivering new product, del delivering product, going and picking up the orders that are ready to go, delivering those to the post office, loading up into the post office. And, uh, you know, it sounds simple, but it is simple, to be honest. But it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of just driving around, a lot of going, getting things, getting... Uh, another one of my jobs is to get the crew together. So we have a bunch of people that are coming in, working with us, and um, so many great people. You know, a lot of my friends and, and friends of friends coming in and just getting people as when they can come in. And uh, we've, had, we've had probably a, a pretty big crew every day since we've been doing this and so it's cool to see see us come together for a big project we got uh thomas nesky going to come in and help uh package some orders and you know we're just doing the best we can and i feel like honestly we're doing a great job i mean sure sure somebody is going to get an order that's messed up it's gonna happen but um keeping it positive is is always what I'm trying to do, keep people motivated and, um, you know, just getting, getting the orders out, you know, that's what I'm doing. So if, uh, if I don't have a, a delivery to, to make, um, with supplies, you know, there's bubble wrap, there's shippers, there's sh the shippers are the cardboard boxes that the, sh the records come in. There's all of that. And, um, it's, uh, it's a lot, but when I'm not doing that, I'll sit down and not sit down. I'll stand over with the rest of the, the people and tape orders and just either or I'll grab orders. So there's different jobs. There's grabbing, there's taping, um, th there's grab, uh, sorry, sorry, there's grabbing, packing and taping. And then from there, it's taking that to the post office. So we're on a pretty amazing roll right now. I appreciate your call, William, man. Uh, let's get to the next caller. Hey, what's up, Mike? Uh, this is Cam. I'm uh, out here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I uh, just was listening to your most recent uh, podcast and that's some, some deep stuff, man. Uh, the whole like, what if this and what if that stuff sort of makes my head spin. Um, but hey, I just wanted to let you know that I'm super pumped uh, about the uh, new re-releases of the three vinyls. Um, I will definitely be purchasing one of each and I'm like, really excited about that. Um, I have a pretty decent MXGX vinyl collection, but Amazingly, I don't have any of those three. So you picked, it's like you handpicked them for me. Um, but hope you're having a good day and uh, can't wait to hear the podcast next week. And uh, keep on keeping on, buddy. All right. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, those records, those were the records that we got the most requests for. And that's why we chose to, to re, 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 reissue them. And, uh, it's going great. We're just so, so thankful for, for all this love and support we've received. So thank you for your order, Cam. I appreciate it. And having a great day. It's, it's been, you know, later on, um, I actually took the kids around my rounds. Um, so we've got a team working on an offsite uh, facility away from the merch arsenal. And so they're just going nonstop all day. And so I'll just bring them supplies. I'll go to the storage, bring supplies to Arsenal. And, uh, you know, our storage space is actually pretty close to the post office. So if I have things loaded up from storage, I can just load it over to the post office and, and make it happen. So I'll be doing that more later today, of course. Um, but by the time you guys hear this, we're going to be, I hope we're going to be close to being done with the bulk of the orders. Um, now, I don't like to, uh, oftentimes I'll say things like absolute, you know, like this is happening or this isn't happening or whatever, but sometimes I don't really know and I'm just doing the best I can. So I'm hoping that by the time you hear this, um, we'll only have a few more days of hardcore packing and shipping. Um, now, that could change because we're still getting orders and, and please don't feel like you, you can't come on our site right now and order anything you can um but yeah it, we're still working on it and by the time you hear this if you hear it soon we're still going to be going but hey that's a good thing that's a great thing um i think you know my goal is to be finished up just in time to head out to chicago and milwaukee for the shows this weekend so um 
Hope to see you there. If you're on the fence, I promise I'll do one for you, just for you. I'll make it special. Uh, we'll put in extra effort for the sets. Um, we're tweaking the set list right now. We always tweak up until we actually play the set. So uh, switching out a song or two here and there, that kind of thing. But uh, it's, 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 uh, it's going, and I can't wait. Um, for those of you not in the area of Chicago, Milwaukee, in the Midwest, and you can't come to that show, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're working on stuff. Um, but like I said, I don't want to be wrong about anything, so I'm not going to go too much farther than that. I will say my wife got me one of these matcha teas. I don't know if you guys drink this. I don't drink caffeine anymore. So now and again, I'll drink, um, I'll drink a matcha tea, which has a type of caffeine, but it's not coffee caffeine. It's a different, it's like a soy, I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Again, it's matcha, you know. Does anybody know what that is? I don't know. But I, I really like these things. These are good. I'm not trying to have a commercial or anything. I'm not trying to endorse the, the brand, but just the actual uh, product or tea that is matcha, matcha green tea. Um, that's, that's sort of the only type of caffeine that I drink is like the super light natural vibe. Now you might say it's Starbucks, it's not natural or, or whatever. Let's not get too crazy into the weeds about this. Let's just, let's just move on. But I do feel pretty good when I'm, when I'm drinking these things. Um, so much so that now and again, if I'm at a show, if I'm doing a show, cause you know, when you play a show, you're up all day usually, and you're doing sound check, you're doing all these other things. It can be a little stressful. And, or when we play a show, not, not everybody will have this experience playing a show, but you're up all day. And by the, towards the end of the day, you're like, okay, we go on in a couple hours. You're getting tired. You're getting tired of just doing nothing and doing everything, you know, like whatever it is you're doing. So no, I don't drink a lot of caffeine. I don't drink caffeine at all, except for the matcha, the green tea. Um, and so I'll have one of those, you know, during the day. And that doesn't get me all cracked out and weird feeling later. I can drink one, feel fine, feel natural, feel good, um, feel energized. And it works for me. And just a random, random thing. I had nothing to do with, with the vinyl. Uh, but I appreciate it, Cam. Thanks for the call. Glad you're excited. Last week, um, honestly, I did not have any free moments to do the podcast. I even had to reschedule a guest that I had scheduled, um, a little insider baseball, you know, because, you know, around here, there's no one else to do th some of the things that I do, you know, and, and there's plenty of people helping out. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not doing everything by myself. We have a great team. We have a huge, a pretty big team, to be honest. And, but there's some things that I just, I need to do. I'm asked, hey, can you get me this? you know, in a couple hours. Can you get me this? Can you get me? This? So, so, uh, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good about just the way things have been going, even though it's been so crazy busy. And I, I, you know, I just had to skip a week. Yeah, it happens. No big deal. Nobody said one word about it. It's just more like, oh, I wonder what happened. Okay. Next week. So here we are. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for, uh, calling into the podcast. If, if you're on the fence about it, we need, we need, I don't know if we need you to call in. I mean, sure, I could just, I, I would love for you to call in. That's, that's more like it. Um, it really is nice to be able to do these, these voicemail episodes when I'm in such a crazy time in my life. I say time in my life, uh, but it's in all our lives here that have anything to do with MXPX because MXPX has gotten so crazy busy lately. Um, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be that busy. You know, I'm not that busy in my personal life. It's just more, it's more the MXPX stuff. It's the, the work, if you will. So that's it. Let's get to, let's do one more. Let's do one more. We're going to do another short episode because to be honest, I need to be out there getting your orders ready. More of your orders. The team is working as we speak, by the way. So don't, don't worry too much. But, you know, when people, when people see, oh, it's, it's November 4th. It starts shipping on November 4th. They think, okay, my order is going to be shipped on November 4th. That's not actually true. I mean, it could be true because we shipped orders out on that first day. But we are not Amazon. We don't have a literal warehouse full of people. We, we have temporary people, temps coming in. Um, I'm like 
a foreman, but I'm also doing stuff myself. And, and Michelle, my mom, who runs the merch arsenal, is has been insane and is going crazy. And uh, <laughs> things are going well, but she's been super busy. So, um, yeah, it's just been crazy. So thank you for your patience. And like I said, things are going great. So just continue to chill, and you'll have your vinyl in a few days. All right. Maybe a week. We'll see. If you're at the end of the list, it could be a week. But that's just how many orders you guys you guys made. There was probably over, absolutely over double the amount of orders we had for the box sets. And I want to say, yeah, I mean, well over double, like almost triple. So that being said, you can understand why, you know, not everybody's going to get their, their package the first day. Now, the people that ordered first are going to get their packages sooner. Um, unless you sign, you know, it, there's just little things. Like if you had like an extra thing, you know, that might, we might need to grab that or something, you know. I've probably said too much. I say way too much on this podcast that I'm sure management, upper management's going to get mad about. Like, the, don't tell the people all the all the details, you know, because people just get more mad that you're still working on things, you know. But I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest that we have not stopped working on this and we're still going. So thank you, thank you for your orders. All right, let's get to one more voicemail. Hey, Mike. Uh, this is DJ out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm kind of a newer fan. I'm only 21 years old. Um, only been getting into you guys for the past few years. I have two questions. Um, number one, uh, what is your favorite looking vinyl product that you have put out whether it be with mxpx or tumble down or your own solo stuff mm. and two what was it like touring with Cody hook and value pack thank you mm -hmm. cool thanks for calling in all right dj um i hope cincinnati's treating you well let me think my favorite my favorite packaging on vinyl that we've done has got to be Southbound to San Antonio. It's our latest live album. We released it, honestly, I think it was early this year, <laughs> early in 2022, if I had to remember. So the album got released late in 2021, like November or December, and we released that to streaming. Uh, but then we didn't have vinyl until months and months later, you know, I, I want to say it was January, February, March, somewhere in there of, of this year, 2022. And so uh, it wasn't a big push, you know, because we, we had already had the album out. And so here's the vinyl. So we tried, we tried to, to do a big push, but definitely, I definitely feel like I might be getting my years messed up as well. So, so don't if I'm wrong, I'm just wrong because <laughs> sometimes I don't know the, the real dates. But I assume I think it came out. Um, the vinyl came out early this year. It, I could be losing a whole year. Maybe it came out early in 2021. Um, so if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. If you're on the socials, let me know in the comments. We have a, a, a Facebook group, My Career Podcast Facebook group. Um, we have Instagram, my current podcast. We have Twitter, my current pod. Um, those are pretty much where I where I um, see comments. All right. So I think that's my favorite, you know, because Southbound to San Antonio was the last show we played before the world shut down for the pandemic. And that's not why it's my favorite. The reason why I was just thinking, the reason why it's my favorite was because of the packaging, it looks so amazing. There's a lenticular cover, so it's like a holographic cover. Um, it's got, like, if you if you rub your fingernail across the top, doot, 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 it'll actually, it'll actually, like, sound like a zipper. Z -z 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 because it's got this uh, image that changes when you move it. So the Poconacha Punk is crowd surfing, and it goes from one area to the other area, crowd surfing across the front of the crowd. And southbound to San Antonio has southbound, and then you'd move it, and it says the whole the whole phrase, the title, southbound to San Antonio. So that cover, and we still have a bunch of those for sale, and and they've been selling as people have been buying the new vinyl, 
the, the reissues they've been buying southbound to San Antonio. You know, if anything, the packaging is worth having. And there's two different variations. There's red and blue. And um, it's a double vinyl. There's actually two records in there. It's really great. Um, what else? There's a few other really, really cool. I mean, there's a lot of really great records that we've we've put together on vinyl. Um, one of the cool packaging uh, singles that we put out was a Tumble Down album. It was a, the first release Tumble Down ever did was Atlantic City. It was a single, and we released it on picture disc, seven inch picture disc. So we had Oliver Peck um, from Dallas, Texas, good friend of mine. He's a tattooer. He did all the artwork for it. He actually was was the one that did you know our coconut or sorry our t uh, tumble down sugar skull. He did the logo for tumble down. So, um, but that that uh, artwork and the the picture disc is so great, and it was sold out you know with, within the first year of of us releasing it. Um, now I don't think we had that many pressed. Probably like three hundred, maybe at the most five hundred. I would say two or three hundred most. Uh, the tumble down numbers are much smaller than the MX Peaks numbers, so that was a that's a really cool um, rare rare release. Um, the screw loose seven inch I always thought was awesome. I just love the artwork, and uh, my buddy Mike Moen did that artwork. Um, that was one that we did. We self released that a couple years ago. Screw loose was uh, a song on. I don't remember what that was on. I think it was on Plans Within Plans, but I could be wrong. Honestly, I'm having a hard time remembering what Screw Loose was on. Somebody write in and tell me, or call in and tell me next time. That's so crazy. Um, all right, one more vinyl thing. Let me think. Um, you know, I think, I think, um, you know, the self-titled stuff, was a great release in variations. We had a bunch of different variations. We had, uh, we had, you know, different covers for it. So I think that was cool. Self-titled. Um, I think we still have yellow vinyl available, but everything else is sold out. Um, now you asked, DJ, you asked about what it was like to tour with Goaty Hook and what was the... What was the last band? Let me rewind here. And two, what was it like touring with Goaty Hook and Value Pack? Ah, thank you. Goaty Hook and Value Pack. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we toured with Goaty Hook so early on, and Value Pack. Toured with them very early on in our careers, and we were kids, but we were just a little bit. Actually, Goaty Hook were were. They were peers of ours, you know, they were doing really well, but they were over in Maryland on the East Coast. So we're very far apart. But we, on our first tour, our very first tour, it was MXPX touring with Blenderhead, two Seattle, Seattle area bands, touring all over the country. And we ended up in Maryland and we played a show with Cody Hook. They opened the show. And I just remember just getting along with them from the very first time we met. They were really fun guys, great band. Um goofy you know just crazy all crazy and you know we i would still we're still friends i mean i haven't seen a lot of those guys in a while but i mean every now and then i'll i'll text joel the singer or or, or somebody you know but uh you know it's uh such a long time ago all good memories go to hook are are solid value pack you know it's funny Value Pack, same deal. We've toured with them so long ago. Um, I think we brought them on tour. Once we were a little bit bigger, we had Small Town, Small Minds on 7-inch. It was a single that we, we released on 7-inch. It was like real punk. And that was sort of like my answer to all the talk back at home in Bremerton. You know, when MX Peaks first got big and we started touring, all the punk scene was like, yeah, 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 those guys aren't good, blah, blah, blah. They don't care about our our local scene and, and we're just, you know, they just talk because they're jealous of somebody getting out, you know? And, and, and since then I, I got to say, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that still talk smack about MXPX, especially in, in our hometown, but our hometown has really embraced this, you know, since then. Um, 
a lot of the scenesters that used to maybe hate us have realized, okay, these guys have stood the test of time. They haven't quit. They're, they're going strong. And at least that's what I tell myself, right? <laughs> that's the, the story we tell, stories we tell ourselves. But, um, but no, I've definitely talked to a lot of people that have, have admitted to like, man, I used to talk a lot of smack about you guys, but you guys are, you guys are all right in my book, you know? And, and that's not what I, you know, my, my goal, you know, at the end of the day, my goal is just to do what we do, not worry about it. But when I was younger, I definitely worried more about it. Hence writing a song called small town, small minds. So, um, but we released that and we went on tour and we brought slick shoes with us and we brought value pack and I'm pretty sure it was just those two bands. And, and I might be wrong. Maybe it was Slick Shoes and somebody else. And maybe it was like Stave Zaker and Value Pack. But um, I think we toured with those a f with Value Pack a few times. But we really did one really big tour where they opened for us. And it was great. I mean, I, I don't remember anything weird. I, I, I think, sure, I mean... There was probably a few times where one of the guys in one of the bands was annoyed with another guy from our band or, or vice versa, you know, and nothing big, nothing, nothing crazy. I would say, I, I would say uh, they were a band that was very surprised to be out there on the road. And just like us, you know, just like us, we started so young. We didn't really know what we were doing. I would say Value Pack was that as well. Like they started so young and they were just trying to figure it out as they went. And and I don't even know if, you know, if like they were expecting to like really be a touring band or, or, or get signed. Maybe it was a fluke. I, I know for sure that I, in my mind, even though I wasn't trying to get signed back in, I think 1994, when we got signed to Tooth and Nail, I wasn't. We weren't trying to get signed to a record label. MXPX was just trying to play shows, trying to do what we do on our own. Uh, we weren't out there asking for help. And you know, I wonder if if, if I'm I'm not saying that Value Pack had the same situation at all, but I wonder if they just were playing and then somebody saw them and was just like, "Hey, let's." they're in the genre that's really big right now, this pop punk, skate punk stuff, you know. So uh, we, we did a lot of tours with, you know, that big tour, but then a lot of shows with Value Pack, you know, back when they were active. Um, yeah, it sounds like you've been listening to some old school Tooth & Nail stuff. Cody Hook, Value Pack. I wonder if you've heard 90 Pound Wuss because they were another band that we toured with quite a lot. And we started, we started playing shows with them before they got signed to Tooth & Nail. Um, they were a local, not local, they were a local Washington band. They weren't local to us. They were, they were out in like Port Angeles, Port Townsend area, Squim. Um, and so we would go out there. They'd put on shows. We'd, we'd play. Um, they were just like, um, you know, the Eagle Scouts Hall or something like that. You know, like they would just put on a show. And, and so they ended up getting signed to Tooth & Nail later. Um, and we went on tour with them. They were, those guys were awesome to tour with. Good people, good band. Um, yeah, Blenderhead, like I said, they were, that was our first tour. And we, uh, we both had these vans, no trailers, vans. We had all our stuff packed underneath, underneath the, a bed that we made in the back of our van. And it was a Chevy Beaumont. That's the type of van it was, probably a a 1988 or a 19, you know, mid 80s van. Um, that thing didn't last too long, but that was like our first, it wasn't our first tour van, but it was our, our first real jaunt around the country tour van. Um, we had tried, we had a, a, this giant ye yellow submarine looking camper van. Um, and it wasn't ours. We didn't own it. We borrowed it from our friend Rob, our first roadie. His parents had this van, and they let us borrow it to go to local shows when we started playing. And eventually, the, we were coming back from a show, and the brakes went out, stopped working. And there should be a, an amazing story behind that, but literally, just as we were in Bremerton on Wheaton Way, which is East Bremerton, uh, it's a ma the main road, so it would be like Main Street, um, it's kind of a highway, four lanes, middle, 
middle turn lane. We ran out of brakes. Brakes locked up, didn't work. And so I think Rob was driving at the time. Rob or Rich, his brother Rich. Um, and we weren't in any danger because we weren't really going that fast. And he's like, the brakes don't work. And so we just had to like just pull over, stop it. And I don't even remember if we like got it towed or if we drove it drove it back to where we needed to go just very slowly. I, you know, it's like, I need to ask. I need to ask Rob if he remembers. But, uh, yeah, good times, good times. So Rob did one tour with us. He wasn't really, like, a real roadie or anything. He was just a guy that w- he was old enough to rent cars, old enough to rent hotel rooms if we needed. And my parents trusted him to make sure that us kids didn't die. He was, uh, I think, just turned 21 at the time, and we were 18. So that's uh, that's some some MXPX story time right there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I heard your feedback. I know that Josh Jones wants uh, wants me to do an episode with a few fans, like actually having them call in live, like a guest. And if we can figure that out, um, you know, the main thing that's going to make that hard is scheduling people and and getting people's actual technical things to work you know like the phone call and the video and the all the the stuff you know so i guess what i'm saying is it's not a bad idea it's just not an idea that can be done without some thought so uh we'll get to it i'm sure and if you want to help make it happen hit up bob mcknight he's my producer editor uh, he's very busy, so give him some time, but he he loves podcasting, and by the way, check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show, while you're at it. Links are all over um, the show notes, always, so if you want to link to MXPX or you want to link to what we've been doing lately, the shows, go to MXPX.com, but the link to his show is also there. Um, all right, you guys, till next week. Thank you so much. Again, thanks for your, your voicemails. If you want to call, the number is 360 360- Eight three zero six 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 zero. Leave me a voicemail. Let me know what kind of topic you want me to hit, or if you had a question, or you just want to bring up something. Jog, jog me to start talking about. Would love to hear from you guys. All right. Thank you for your orders, and thank you. I can't wait to see you guys this weekend in Chicago and Milwaukee. It's been too long. Um, stay tuned. All right. MXPeaks.com for those tickets if you still want to go. See you there.